the cloud. All right, I think I'm recording now. Uh, yes. So yeah, so today, of course, we're going to have a review. So this is review. Um, yeah, so the test um, is going to be this Wednesday, right? Uh, this Wednesday. Um, at 12. So it's from 12, 12 p.m. So um, I'm going to give you um, uh, 30 minutes, uh, an ex extra 30 minutes, guys, so you can upload your answers on Blackboard. So uh, it's from 12 to uh, 2 p.m., right? So uh, 12 to 2 p.m., right? Uh, so we have an extra 30 minutes, you know, to upload your answers. Um, um, uh, and then next uh, Monday, we're going to have a review for the final. Review uh, for the final. So the final, of course, covers everything, right? The whole semester. So, um, um, and uh, the final, of course, it's on May 23rd. May 23rd. Um, so I think the last, so last, last class is going to be, uh, next, uh, it's next Monday, right? Because I think the examination period starts on Wednesday, May 18th. So that'll be Wednesday next week. Uh, so, uh, yeah, next Monday would be our last, uh, lecture. Okay. I think uh, next Tuesday would be a reading day. And then, uh, yeah, and then exams, they start on uh, May 18th. So that's uh, Wednesday of next week, All right? So we're gonna have a review today and tomorrow uh, for the second test. So the second test covers, uh, you know, test two. So you have sections or chapters, you know, you have chapters, um, chapter six, uh, chapter seven, and then sections 8.1 and 8.2, okay? And the final, uh, final, as I said, covers everything, everything, all the chapters and all sections. Um, all right. That's so, a, that's, yeah. Is it like um, for one question for each section? Uh, for the final? Not, no, because, no, not necessarily, no. Mm. Um, so I will post a review sheet probably uh, this week on Thursday. Um, and um, no, it's, it doesn't cover all the sections. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I, because you, you have like, you don't have like, um, it's, um, you know, it's a, it's a two hours exam. So, uh, you know. Um, oh God. Uh, yeah, so it, it's not that long. I mean, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't cover all the, the sections, uh, for sure. But as long but as we have the review, whatever's on it. Yeah, review. the review, of course. Yeah, I mean, you need to study okay. everything. You need to prepare everything. You need to be ready for uh, all kind of uh, problems and questions, right? You need to be ready for everything. But uh, yeah. Um, all right. All right, so let, let, let's uh, start with the review. So. Um, Unless you have a specific request, guys, I can probably start with the first, the chapter six, uh, problems one and two. Um, um, yeah, so is there any specific question specific? Let me see the chat. Hi, Yanni. Hi, Nouvelle. I got you guys, thank you. Um, all right, no specific request. So let's, let's just uh, do the, start from the first uh, beginning, first question, so it's section, uh, 6.1. All right. Uh, so the problem, it says, so we roll a crooked die, let X be the number we get. The following is the probability distribution of X. Fine. So the question is, um, so X, it's the number. So you roll a die and you, the X is the number you get. And then uh, you get the following probability distribution for X. So again, by probability distribution, guys, we mean 
for each value of x, you assign the probability of x. So of course, when you roll the die, uh, possible numbers you can get uh, are from one to six. So x can be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then it says uh, p of x, probability of x, the probability to get one is 0 0.125. To get two, the probability is 0 0.25, uh, et cetera. 125, 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.3, and then probability to get six when you roll this die is 0 0.50. All right, so this is uh, your probability solution. Now the question is first, it says find the population mean mu. Mean mu. Okay. So, and this is this section 6.1, it's not, this is not uh, a binomial distribution. Uh, we are not talking about uh, a normal distribution, right? right? There is no uh, normal distribution here. There's no uh, binomial distribution. So in 6.1, what we discussed was this discrete distributions. So 6.1, uh, this is where we discussed uh, discrete distributions. Um, okay. Um, so the, for the discrete distribution, we said the, the, the probability of, uh, so the, the mean, population mean mu. <coughs> is equal to sum of x times p of x, okay? So this is the formula for mu, for population mean mu for the section 6.1, right? If you check your, you know, check your, check your uh, formula sheet in chapter six. Uh, so chapter six, section 6.2, 6.3, we discussed binomial distributions. You know, we have this probability of success, a percentage, uh, P, et cetera. By the section 6.1, uh, you have a probability distribution. So we have uh, this kind of table, right? And then from that table, we can compute the population uh, mean. So it's just, so the mean is actually equal to, so you take uh, X. So the values of possible values of X here are one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So for the first value of x, it's uh, it's one. So that will be one times the probability of x. So the probability to get x. Probability to get one is 0 0.125. So that's one times 1.125 plus, right? Because we have a summation, it's a sum. Next value of x is two times probability of x, which is 0 0.25 plus, Next value of x is three. Uh, probability to get three is 0 0.125. Uh, next value of x is four. It probably is 0 0.05, uh, then five. Probably to get five is 0 0.3. And then six. And probably to get six is when, uh, when you roll a die, probably to get six is a point uh, 15. So the six times 0 0.15. So mu, first you uh, multiply, right? Uh, from this rule, you multiply first, you do the multiplication first. Um, so one times 0 0.25, that's 0 0.25 plus next. So we have two times 0 0.25, that's 0 0.5 plus three times 1.125, that's 0 0.375, four times 0 0.05, that's 0 0.2, and then plus uh, five times 0 0.3, that's 1.5, and then six times 0 0.15, uh, that's 0 0.90 or 0 0.9, right? So once you are done with the multiplication, then you can add, uh, you can add the answers. So that's 0 0.125 plus five, that's 0 0.625 uh, uh, plus uh, 0.375, that's uh, one plus 0.2, that's 1.2. So the answer uh, 1.2 plus 1.7, that's 2.7. Uh, 
plus 0.9, that's uh, 3.6. So we answered uh, uh, the population mean mu would be uh, 3.6. So that's the expected, so the population mean mu, that's the expected number, that's the expected number of X. When you roll a die, expected number. Uh, so when, when you roll this die, then the, the expected the number you expect to get is 3.6. So it's uh, it's either between three and four. All right. So this is for section 6.1. That's how we compute the population mean. Um, and then uh, there is the, the population standard deviation sigma. Uh, sigma. Uh, so. So find uh, population standard deviation sigma standard uh, deviation sigma. So um, so there are two steps to compute sigma, right? So first step. Step one, you need to compute sigma square. So sigma square is actually um, uh, the sum of x minus the, the, your data value minus the mu, the, 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 the population mean mu square times p of x, okay? So like in this example, sigma square would be, so you start with the first value of x, so this is multiplication here times, is dot here. So first value of x, for example, first value of x, of course, is uh, is one, right? You take one. So one minus. So it's like one. That's your x minus. So you subtract the the population mean, the mu. That's uh, uh that's a uh, three point six. So one minus three point six, and then you take the square of the difference times multiplied by the probability of x. So your x is one, right? That's the first value of x. Probability of x is 0.125. So times 0.125, so times 0.125. It's a summation, right? We have a sum here. So plus next x, next x is two minus same number, population mean 3.6 squared times the probability of X, probability of X is two, it's 0.25, right? When X is two, the probability of X is two is 0.25. So it's times 0.25, right? Plus, et cetera. So next value of X is three minus 3.6 squared times probability of, uh, probability of X equal to three, that's 0.125 plus next value is four. Probability that X is four is 0 0.005, 0 0.05, plus next value of X is five, right, equal to six, the square times probability that X is uh, five, it's 0 0.3, plus, and the last value is six, uh, square times 0 0.50. All right, so again, thumb that's rule, guys. First, you go with the parentheses, um, so you subtract like one minus um, uh, 3.6, that's negative 2.6, right? And then there is a square, okay? Times the 0.125 plus next, next parenthesis is, so you subtract first, right? So two minus negative uh, minus uh, 3.6, so that's negative 1.6 square times the 0.25, et cetera. Uh, so three minus 3.6, that's negative 0. 0.6 uh, uh, square times 0. 0.125, uh, 0. 0.4 square point times 0. 0.05, uh, 1.4 square times 0. 0.3, and uh, finally we have uh, six minus 
uh, 3.6, that's 2.4 squared times 0.50. Yes, <clears throat> yes. Um, I see that the way you're doing it, I did mine a little different, but I okay. want to make sure like that it's okay because I made like a graph. Okay. And I oh, have yeah. like, like x, and then I have x minus mu, and I have x minus mu um squared, okay. and I have pox, and I have x um minus um mu squared mm -hmm. times p of x. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very good. That's uh, yeah. If you want to go like, yeah, step by step, you can do that, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can make like a, like a table and, you know, take this X or, and then X minus mu and then square and then, yeah, absolutely. And what I did was that, like whatever I got from X minus mu, mm -hmm. I just squared it. And then I went to my next box and I did X minus mu squared. I already squared my answer. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah 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 sure sure you can do that yeah yeah of course okay. um yeah, yeah absolutely yeah uh actually probably that would be a really good idea actually to go you know to make like a table and then do the squares and yeah yeah absolutely yeah. um yeah so but it's just it's, it's just it's, it's the same steps here i mean we we we, we uh, compute the difference and then we took this uh, and then now we're going to take the square like in the square of this negative 2.6 that would be positive. Uh, and don't forget, guys, just the, the square of a negative number would be positive, right? So uh, here, when you take the square, it's going to be always positive. So this is negative 2.6 squared. That would be positive 6.76 uh, times the 0.125 plus square of uh, negative 1.6. As I said, square of negative would be positive. So this is just positive 2.5. 56 times 0.25, you know, uh, negative 0 0.6 uh, square, same thing. It's going to be positive point. So it's 0 0.36 times 0 0.125, uh, 0 0.4 uh, square. It's actually equal to uh, uh, 0 0.16 uh, times 0.05. Etc. So let me just write down here the answers. So 1.4 uh, square is going to be equal to uh, 1. Point, uh, so this is 1.96 uh, uh, times uh, point P, 0. Point P. And finally, you have 2.4 uh, square that will be equal to. Um, uh, uh, let me see my notes. Yeah, so it's 5.76 times uh, 0.50, right? So we, we did the subtraction inside the parentheses. I, and we, now we, we compute the square. Now I'm going to do the, right, parentheses, exponent, and then multiplication. So now we're going to multiply, right? So uh, 6.76 times uh, 0 0.125, that's actually equal to uh, 0 0.845 plus uh, 2.56 times 0 0.25, that's actually equal to uh, 0 0.64 plus. So, and then you have 0 0.36 times uh, 0 0.125, that's actually equal to 0 0.045 plus uh, 0 0.16 times 0 0.05, that's actually equal to 0 0.008. Uh, 1.96 times 0. Uh, p. that's actually equal to 0. 0.588. And finally, it's 5.76 times uh, 0. 0.15, uh, that's uh, 0. 0.864. 
So once you are done with, uh, with the, the mitigation, now we can add. All right, so find the answer here. Uh, well, it's not find an answer. I mean, that's the sigma uh, square. Uh, let me see my notes. So this is actually uh, plus. Yeah, so that's uh, plus 0 0.5. Make sure that I have the right answer here. Um, so that would be equal to 0. Yeah, so it's. Uh, it's two point, I think, ninety nine. If I'm not, if I'm, if my, uh, if my, if my, my computations are correct. So that's sigma square, right? And then last step, step two, your sigma. Um, let me see if there's any question in the chat. Anything? No. So sigma, sigma, it's just a square root of sigma square. So that's sigma, a square root of two point uh, ninety nine. Which is actually equal to uh, two point. No, sorry, one point uh, seventy two. So this is one point seventy two, or one point seventy three if you if you round round up your your answer. Um, I yeah, so that's do that part because I got the two point nine nine. Uh huh. But I didn't do the um the square, square root, root though. Yeah, you need to do the square root. I didn't do the that's square like root. The final, that's like the final step. Okay. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, any other question, guys? Well, I mean, this is a long kind of long computation, right? I think it's, I, I, well, it can, of course, it can be in the, in the test, but uh, it's kind of long, uh, uh, it's really long computation. When you, you know, when you compute this uh, sigma, this is standard, standard uh, deviation, uh, it can take uh, like uh, more than five or 10 minutes, right? Uh, but anyway, uh, you need to know how to do that, right? So that's how we compute this uh, sigma. All right, so that's for section uh, 6.1. So all you need to know, or all you need to memorize from this uh, section 6.1 is how to compute the the population mean and the population standard deviation uh, for a discrete uh, variable. Discrete variable, you know, again, it means that your variable variable has a finite number of values. Like uh, here, our variable x has, you know, six possible values, right, from one to six. And for each value of x, you have the probability of x, right? This, uh, this probability distribution, right, the, the table. With the x and the probability of x. Once you have that, so we have with the table with the probability distribution, you can compute, of course, the so that's how we compute the population mean and population standard deviation. Is there any question, guys, about this uh, section 6.1? So, as I said, all you need to know or all you need to memorize or, uh, from this uh, section 6.1 is how to compute this population mean mu and population standard deviation sigma. All right, if there are no questions, then I guess I can move, let me see the chat. All right, no questions from, from the chat. All right, so let, let me move now to the section 6.3, 6.2 and 6.3. So um, section 6.2 and section 6. So this is where we discuss the binomial distribution the first time, binomial distribution. So in general, guys, uh, you, get, you know that you have a binomial distribution when you see like a percentage. Whenever you see like a percentage in the, in the statement or the, in the question, um, you see some percentage, then that's probably your probability of success. So like here, the six, uh, this problem, is, it says, um, a study shows that 10% of all businessmen who wear ties wear them too tight. So you see like in the first sentence, you got that the percentage 10%. So if you see the percentage, then that's probably a binomial distribution, okay? And the percentage would be your probability of success. So um, yeah, so uh, it says, as I said, this 10% of all businessmen, et cetera. So this is a binomial distribution. It's a binomial distribution because when you select a random, a random businessman, right? 
So the businessman either wears the, the ties too tight or he doesn't, right? Or the, the, the ties are not, are not too tight, right? So it's like, it's, there is like two possible outcomes, right? Success, this is when the ties are too tight. Ties are too tight, right? You select. So this is a binomial, a binomial distribution. Uh, so because when you select a random businessman, a random uh, businessman. So either the ties are too tight or they are not, okay? And you know that 10% of all businessmen wear ties, wear them too tight. So the 10%, the that's so then here's your success when the ties are too tight and when they are not, that will be a failure. So the percentage you have, that will be your P, that will be your probability of success. So probability of success, P, lowercase p, uh, probability of success, that's your 10%, okay? So again, guys, if you see the problem, like in first or second sentence, you, you see a percentage, then that, that's probably a binomial distribution where the percentage is equal to your, is your P, is your probability of success. So we have this percentage, 10%. So that's my, that's our P, probability of success. Q, it's just one minus P, the probability of failure. Q, that's probability of the capital F, failure. One minus P. Um, Can I ask you so, a question? Yeah, please, please. All right, so, all right, you see how we have the probability is 10%. So yeah. when I'm setting up my paper, I know that's the probability is 10%, but I have to remember that the percent has to be converted into a decimal to do one oh, minus yeah. P, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause that was messing me up. I was getting, I would go through the thing, like through the formula. And then when I got to one minus P, I'm like, I can't get it. I can't get it because I didn't remember that I had mm -hmm. to convert that percentage to- um, Yeah, to a decimal, mm -hmm. to a decimal. Yeah, yeah, so just, just remember, you see this uh, symbol? That's division by hundred. When you say ten percent, percent, percent means division by hundred. This percent, you see the percent? That's division by hundred. Yeah, I remember division. you were teaching us that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's ten over divided by hundred. That's uh, point uh, one, right? That's zero point zero point one zero. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Um, so I can do that, Professor. Can I do that in any problem that I get for that section? Once I get my P, I know that like on the side, I'll just put like example, like point, um, <clears throat> you know, point mm -hmm. 10 because it's mm -hmm. 10%. So if it was 15, I would put point 15 on the side. So I know when I get yeah. to the end of my flower. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course okay. you can do that. Yeah, of course. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Um, and so then, yeah, Q would be one minus 0 0.10. So that's 0 0.90. Um, all right, now, uh, so after the percentage, so in the first sentence, there's this percentage, that's your P. But the ne next sentence, uh, there is a number. It says at the board meeting of six businessmen, right? So we have this group of six businessmen. So the, that number, that's your N, that's your number of, uh, that's the size of the sample or the number of trials, right? So usually you have like, when you have a binomial distribution, you're going to have like a percentage that will be your P. And then after the number, uh, after a percentage, you're going to have like a number and that will be your N. That's your number of trials. So number of trials. Uh, so we have a group, a group of six uh, businessmen. So n, the size of the sample or the number of trials, that's six. That's equal to six. All right. Now it says, uh, what's the probability that exactly three ties are too tight? Exactly three. Okay. Um, so you wanna you wanna find so a. So we wanna find the probability that uh, three ties are too tight. 
So when ties are too tight, that's a success, right? Ties, we said, you know, ties are too tight. That's a success. That's what I mean by a, by a success, when the ties are too tight. So exactly three ties, it means exactly three successes. And so we need, so we need to find the probability that R, the number of successes, is exactly three. So exactly three successes. Exactly three successes. All right. So um, how I'm going to compute this uh, probability that R is three. So in this case, the N is six, right? So N is less than 20, right? This is this N is less than 20. So in general, guys, when your N is less than 20, then you can use this uh, table number two. Okay, so when N, when the, the, the number of trials or size of, is, of the sample is less than 20, so N is less than 20, 20 then we use, we can use a table number two to find this probability of successes, use table two. All right, so table two, I want R to be three, so I know n is six. Number of tries is six. N is six. R is three. Uh, I need exactly three successes. And the probability of success is 0 0.10. So N is six, R is three, and P is uh, 0 0.10. So let's go to the table number two. All right, so here's my table number two. Uh, N is six, right? So check the first uh, column. That will be your n. The first column that will be your n. So two, three, four. So we need to go down to six. So you see six, n is six. Now next to six, there is like zero, then one, two, three. That's the number r. Our r is t, right? So we need to go to n equal to six. R is t, and then your p is 0 0.10. So in the top. As you can see, guys, in the top, uh, that's your P. So that's uh, the percent, your percentage. Our P or our percentage is 0 0.10. So uh, for R equals to 3.10, you get 0 0.015, All right? So the answer here, so the answer is point, uh, 0 0.015, right? So this is, yes, 0 0.015. All right, so this is 0 0.015. Again, guys, how I got this, how I got this 0 0.015. So as I said, there's N, the first column. So there's like two and then three and then four, but we need to go to six, right? Because N is six. Next to N, it's R. So next to six, there's like zero, one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Our R is three. So we need to go to R equal to P, right? Now in this row, you need to go to where P is, you know, in the top you have your P. So you have like point, uh, zero 0.01, point, I think 0 0.05, and then point, uh, one zero, et cetera, point 15, point, uh, two zero, point 25, et cetera. But our P is point 0.10, right, point 0.10. So uh, if you go all the way down to R equal to three, then uh, you're gonna get this point uh, zero fifteen. So that's how I got my point zero fifteen. I have put um, yeah. point zero one five. I didn't put the zero in front of it though. Like no, I no, didn't put need, uh, no no. That's uh, all right. So you, you put like point zero point fifteen like this. I put I put point zero one five. That's why what I that's why I you yeah, know oh I seen you had no but you have zero point zero one five. I didn't put that extra zero like before. Oh, the that's the same thing. So I, okay, zero, I want to make sure that was okay for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, when okay. I write like, when I write zero point zero fifteen, that's the same thing as just ignore the zero and point zero fifteen. That's the same okay. thing. That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. All right. Any other questions, guys? Let me see the chat. Please, you guys, I mean, don't be shy if you. If you have any question, please let me know, all right? Because this is a time when you're supposed to ask questions. Um, all right, then it says, uh, next question, it says, at most two ties are two ties. At most, right? At most means the maximum, yeah? 
at most two ties are tight, are too tight. So at most means the maximum. You cannot have more than two. Maximum is maximum is two ties. So the maximum is two. All right. No more than two. No more. At most, the same thing as saying no more than two. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hey, Nanny. Um, oh, I know. All right, probably I need to meet someone. Sorry I'll about that. that. Um, uh... All right. Um, so no more than two, at most two times, right? So R, so we need to find the probably that R, the number of successes, the number of ties, uh, which are two tied, is no more than two. So no more than two, uh, that's, so maximum is two, so that will be, either zero or one or two, okay? No more than two. So if it's no more than two, then it can be equal to zero uh, or one or two, okay? So no more than two, that's zero or one or two. So, so we need to find the probability that R is zero plus probability that the R is one, plus probably that R is two. All right, and again, the same thing from just from the table. If we go to the table number two, now R is zero, R is one is, and R is two. So if you go to the table, um, then um, for, R, uh, for R equal to zero, I think we have point, 0 0.5 to one, uh, for R equal to one, we have 0 0.3 or 0 0.354. And when R is two, we have point or, or 0 0.98, okay? So again, guys, here, our N is the same. N is six, same idea, N is six. R, it's either zero. So when it's zero, you get 0 0.531. When it's R is one, you get the 0.354. And when R is two, you get this 0 0.098. And then of course you need to take the, the, the sum, right? So it's 0 0.531 plus uh, 0.354 plus uh, 0.098. All right, so then find the answer. It's actually 0. 980, um, you don't have to convert this uh, into percentage, but if you want to convert this into percentage, uh, so you multiply by 100, right? So that's 98.3%. So if you want to convert number into percentage, you multiply by 100. If you have a percentage and, uh, and you want to write it as decimal, we divide by 100, right? Percentage means, this percentage again means that division by 100. All right. <clears throat> um, if there are no questions, guys, let's move to the next. It says at least four. So at least four, that's the minimum. So the minimum is four. So next question, next question says at least four ties, four ties are two ties. Um, so, in other words, the minimum, the minimum is four, at least four. So the minimum is four. So be because we have a group of six, so if the minimum is four, then the number of successes would be either uh, four or five or six, right? You can you cannot get more than six uh, because we have a group of six people, right? Or six businessmen. So if the minimum is four, then a uh, number of successes can be equal to four or five. Number of successes R is equal to five or R is equal to six. So that's probably that R is four plus probably that R is five plus probably that R is six. 
Um, so again, you can, you can just use our table too because n is less than 20. Again, n is six. Um, um, you know, and r, when r is four, uh, probability of success, of course, is uh, 0 0.10. So when r is four, we have 0 0.01. Uh, when r is two, uh, sorry, well, well, when r is five, that's 0 0.000. zero, zero. Uh, it's almost zero. And then when r is six, we have 0 0.000. Zero, zero. So the answer here is actually 0 0.001. Uh, and want to convert this into percentage, multiply by by a hundred, so that's um, zero point one percent. Oh, professor, I forgot to yes. ask you real quick for yeah, the um, one we just did before, the one that yeah. was um, at most two ties. That's uh, the course, one yes. that we take the highest. Yes. The high, okay. the, yeah, at most it means no more than. Yeah, but at that's most, the one we have to calculate twice, the probability twice, right? But that's uh, a, no, that's I mean, a different one. No, no, it's different. No, no, not no, twice. No, no, no. That's no. something further down. No, no, no. So at most, so no more. Uh, so here, for example, it says at most two, so no more than two. So it can be equal to zero or one or two. Yeah, never mind. So like you have like three different possible values for R. Um, all right, so next, uh, next question. Uh, you know, I can use that yeah, with section, please. that was for section um, 7.1 through 7.3 because that was the one when it was Oh, like, yeah, yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the one, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, all right, and then last uh, question says, what's the expected number of ties to type? Uh, again, when you see the word expected number, we mean the mean or the average, that's what we mean by the expected number. Uh, well, uh, so I mean, last question, it says, what's the expected number of ties to type? So expected number, that's the average, that's the mean, okay? So, uh, so here it says, what's the expected number of ties to type? So the question is, how do we compute the mean in this case, when you have in this uh, section on the, uh, in this uh, chapter six, when you have a binom binomial distribution. So we know, uh, so binomial, it's a binomial distribution, right? You have this percentage, 10%. So the mean mu, it's n times p. That's a formula for the, the, the mean when we have a binomial distribution. So n is six uh, times the p, p, uh, percentage or probability of success that's 10 percent that's 0 0.1 or 0 0.10 so the answer is 0 0.6 okay so what we are saying guys so in this group of six businessmen the expected number of ties too tight is actually 0 0.6 um what's the standard deviation of the distribution so sigma, so when you have binomial distribution, you have this percentage. Um, so sigma is square root of n times p times q. So it's square root of n, six people. We have six, six businessmen. P is, we said it's point, uh, 0 0.1. And q, that's one minus p. So we said it's 0 0.9. So first you multiply, uh, you know, uh, what, the numbers under, under, under the square root. So under the square root, you have uh, six times 0 0.1 times uh, 0 0.9. So that will be equal to uh, 0 point, so square root of 0 0.54. So we need to take the square root of 0 0.54, which is actually equal to 0 0.73. Okay, so that's your uh, 0 0.54. So, uh, so the answer is 0 0.73. So that's your uh, standard deviation of this binomial distribution. Um, all right. Um, all right, next 
uh, next uh, chapter or next uh, section. A any any questions so far, guys? So again, uh, I mean, to distinguish between chapter six, I would say, and chapter chapter seven. Um, so, like in if in the first, like in the first sentence or the first uh, two sentences, you don't see a percentage, then. Um, it's probably about the chapter seven. So it's probably a normal distribution. So like next problem. Um, so this is section, this is a section, it says, it says section 7.1, 7 7.2 and 7.3. All right, I mean, in this, the, the, in these three sections, the, the, the most important section is the 7.3. Because actually we use what we learned in 7.1 and 7.2 to compute the, the normal distribution of X in the 7.3. So the main section is 7.3. All right, so what does it say the, the problem here? Uh, it says the following. So uh, there is this X. Um, you have your X, it's a random variable represent the length of time it takes to uh, it takes a student to write a term paper for a doctor. Adam's uh, sociology class. Uh, so this is X is this is math of time to write a term, uh, a term paper for this class. And it says it was found that X has a mean and the standard deviation. Uh, so mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. Um, so, um, so X here actually follows a normal distribution. Um, so the mean of this normal distribution, so mean mu at 6.8. So you have this mean, mean which is 6.8 hours. That's uh, the average. And the standard deviation sigma is 2.1. So like you see in this problem, guys, there is no percentage. You have your mu, you have your, I mean, you have your mean, mu, and you have standard deviation sigma. So you don't see any percentage here, right? So which means if you don't, when you don't see a percentage and that's not binomial, that's probably just a, a normal distribution. So the, we have uh, this normal distribution with the mu 6.8 and sigma is 2.1. All right, now what's probability that uh, it says it takes less than six hours, less than six hours for a student to write a term paper. So less than six. Uh, you wanna your you wanna x x is the length of time, right, to write this term paper. So you wanna x to be less than six hours. So we wanna find probably that x is less than six. So this is less than x less than six. So yeah, so in this uh, section 7.3 guys, um, so what we learned is that uh, you can to compute this probability, you can convert X to the Z, to the variable of the standard normal distribution, and then you can use the table, table three, right? So here, as a first step, you are supposed to convert, convert X to Z, right? So the Z would be, X minus mu over sigma, right? So probability that Z is, and then you convert this uh, six to Z. So that's a value of X. Six is a value of X. You're gonna convert, convert to Z. So you subtract mu minus mu. So minus 6.8 over and divide by sigma, right? Sigma is 2.1, so you divide by 2.1. And then, uh, so that's probably the Z is less than, so in the top, that's the negative. Don't forget the negative. You need to start with the six, six minus 6.8. It's not 6.8 minus six, right? The, the sign here is very important. Uh, so it's negative 0 0.8 over 2.1. There, you don't get the same answer with the minus, uh, if, you have a, if you had a plus instead of a minus. All right, so it's negative 0 0.8 divided by 2.1. So this is Z less than 
Uh, so this is actually a negative. Um, so 0 0.8 divided by 2.1. So that's actually, that's equal to, let me see my notes. So it's actually negative P, uh, 0 point, uh, negative 0 0.38. Right, so now, um, once you're done uh, with uh, with uh, this fraction, then you can now use uh, because this is less, right? It's less, so that's area to the left, and that's exactly what's given by the the the, the table three. So the table three gives us the, the areas to the left, right? So less, that's the area to the left, and that's exactly what we get when you use the table three. So we can use our table three. Uh, so to use the table three, I'm gonna use this number right here, negative 0 0.38, and negative 0 0.38. First, we take the nearest tenth. So that would be the negative 0 0.3, right? The first digit, take just take the first digit after, the first digit after the decimal point. So nearest tenth is negative 0 0.3, and then the hundred, nearest hundredth it's this number right here so it's just eight so let's go to the table there's a I think there's a question in the chat let's see there's something in the chat that was me I put the answer oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah oh thank you thank you Kayla. Mm -hmm. um all right let me okay let me show you how to use again uh, this table three, where is it? Right here. All right, just be careful, guys. First page, you have negative Z. Uh, the second page, you have the positive Z, right? So in our case, Z is negative. So it's negative, uh, actually, nearest tenth is 0 0.3. So you need to go all the way down the first column, down to negative 0 0.3. And then nearest hundredth, it's eight. So we need to go, so we use the row where Z is negative 0 0.3, and then you go to 0 0.08. So the answer is 3520. Is that your answer? Uh, nope, 20? I put 3809. Uh, okay, this is 3809. Uh, let me see. Uh, that's weird. Uh, I, because we get, we have, uh, I see it's three, five, two, zero. I might've uh, written it down wrong though. <clears throat> uh, oh, I guess, oh no, no, no. I see you, what the three, eight, zero, nine. I think that's, you know, that's three, eight, zero, nine. That's what you get when you divide. Yeah, that's my answer. Two numbers here. No, but th that's not. You're not done. That's not the final answer. Okay. And the first thing, the second, second thing is don't forget the minus. It's a minus. It's not a plus, right? Again, it's there is difference between six minus six point eight, and so you need to start with the, the six. So when you you know when you use your calculator, you need to enter six first. Okay. Right. Six and minus, and then six point eight. So then your answer is going to be negative. You'll see that it's negative. All right? Okay. Okay. And we are not done yet. As I was saying, that's the probability that Z is less. So after that, we need to use this chart to find the answer. All right? Don't forget to use the chart, right, to find the answer. So we have this negative 0 0.3809. We can just ignore the zero nine, okay? So it's negative 0 0.38. And then we use the chart, as I said, here with the Z, uh, the stable P. And then you go to uh, all the way down to negative 0 0.3. And then uh, the nearest hundred, it's 0 0.08. So the answer is 0 0.3520. So fine answer is actually point or 0 0.3520. That's a fine answer. And uh, convert to into percentage, multiply by 100, that's 35.20 or 0.2%. That's a fine answer.
so the yeah the point p eight zero nine that's not find the answer that's the, the value of z that's what what we get when you convert x to z we convert the six to z so let me type it in my box real quick yeah sure, sure because sure. i didn't finish it i might have yeah. I don't know. So my remark. Yeah. So once you once you once you uh, you are done with the fraction, then you need to use the the chart. Okay. Um. Any other question, guys? Let's see the chat. Right. Um. Next, it says, so this is less, right? Well, the, when we have less, you can, you can use the, the table. Uh, the, there's no problem because the table gives us the areas to the left. Now, next question that says, it takes more than 7.2 for hours for a student to write a, a term paper. So this is now, it's more than, it's, so this is different from the previous example. So probably that X is more than 7.2. So this is a symbol for more than. So this is X more than or larger than or greater than, than 7.2. And keep in mind guys, more than you need the area. So you see, you, you, have, your, you have your number line. You know, you have your number line, you have your 7.2 and what you need is more than 7.2. So more than 7.2, that would be the, the right side of 7.2. So we need the area to the right of 7.2, okay? So more than, that's the area to the right. And that's not in the table. Doesn't, the table P doesn't give us the, the area to the right, right? This is, so this is the area to the right. But first, before using the table, we need to convert to Z. So first, step one, convert to Z. Right? As you convert, X to Z. So that's probably that Z is more than and convert X to Z. So convert 7.2 to Z. So we subtract the, the, the mu, uh, mu, which is 6.8. And we divide by the standard deviation, which is 2.1. Right, so 7.2 and then you subtract 6, 6.8, that's 0 0.4. So this is Z more than 0 0.4 over 2.1. It's a plus 0 0.4, right? So you enter first 7.2 and then you subtract uh, 6.8. So when you divide, so the answer is actually 0. Point, let me see my notes, 0. Point, uh, uh, one, Zero. Mm. nine. yeah. Oh, I got so, the wrong answer again. 0 0.9. And that, that's why we are doing this review so you can check your answers. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. um, all right, we are not done yet, okay? This is just a conversion of X to Z. Now we are supposed to use the chart to get the final answer. But the problem is, this is the area to the right. It's more, it says more. So area to the right. So, and we said area to the right plus the area to the left, that would be one. So when you solve for the area to the right, Area to the right is always one minus. Okay, so this is this is area to the right, and area to the right would be one minus the area to the left. One minus the area to the left. So that's z less than zero point eighteen. Right. So. Now I can use my table because I converted my area to the right to one minus the area to the left. So now I can use my table. So one minus, and now I can use this 0 0.19 uh, to, um, to get the value of the, the to get my probability. So 0 0.19, so nearest, uh, nearest tenth, it's 0 0.1, and nearest hundred, it's uh, 0 0.09, so it's 5753. So it's 0.5, 
0 0.575 feet. Uh, which is um, minus, so 0 0.575 feet. So yeah, so that would be equal to 0 0.42. 47. Right, that's the final answer. Oh, I got it right. You got it right? Mm -hmm, I put it in the chat. Okay, okay, cool. Um, convert into percentage. You don't have to convert the final answer into percentage, guys. I'm just, I'm trying just to explain that if you want to convert this into percentage, you multiply by 100, that's 42.47%. So the percentage or the probability that, you know, that the student uh, that it takes more than 7.2 hours for a student to write a term paper is actually 42.47%. Right, so this is when you have more. So don't forget, when you see the word more, you have to, there is this extra step where you, you know, convert this area to the right to the area to the left. So it's one minus, right? Don't forget to subtract. All right, so now next, last, uh, la uh, next question and last case. This is when you have like X between. So it takes between five and eight hours. So it takes between uh, five and eight hours for a student to write a term paper. So you wanna know your X. So the way to write or to express this uh, takes between five and eight. So your X is between. So this means X is between five and eight. You right, know what so I was doing when I was when I was mm -hmm. doing this review with these questions, I had to mm -hmm. what helped me was I would like ask myself like what changed in the question and uh, what was changing was the X like the X, the X kept changing but the, the standard deviation always stayed the same in the yeah, new, so always yeah. stayed the same. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you and no, some deviation in me, they say the same. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. What like yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so always as a first step, convert X to Z. So we're gonna convert, convert this X to Z. So you have your mu, you have your sigma. So five minus your mu, your 6.8 over sigma. Same thing here for eight minus mu over sigma. So that's negative. Again, guys, don't forget negative. So negative first, you start with a five and then you subtract 6.8. So five minus 6.8 is negative 1.8 over 2.1, Z. And then eight minus 6.8, that's positive. That's 1.2 over 2.1. So we have our Z between so negative 1.8 over 2.1, that will be equal to 0. Uh, let's see, that's it. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, it's uh, 0. Uh, uh, 0.85. So it's negative, don't forget the negative, 0. 0.85. Okay. And uh, 1.2 over 2.8, that's actually 0. 57 plus 7. Okay. So that's your first step. Convert X to Z. Now, this we have a problem here. This is not the area to the left. This is the area between two numbers, right? This is the area, area between two numbers. So it's not the area to the left. So we are not ready yet to use the table P. We need to you know, express everything in terms of areas to the left. So this is area between two numbers or two values. All right, so how do we express area between two numbers in terms of the areas to the left, right? So if you have the area to the right, you do one minus the area to the left. So that's how we express area to the right in terms of the area to the left. Now, if you have the area between two numbers, that's the area to the left, of the second number, always you start with the second number. So that's area to the left 
of the second number minus the area to the left of the first number. So this is the area to the left of the first number. All right. So that's how we express area between two numbers in terms of areas to the left. All right. Once I express everything in terms of areas to the left, now I can use my table. Right. So let me see my table. Uh, Z, so 0 0.57, C, so it's positive, 0 0.5, and then we go, we need to go to uh, 0 0.7, uh, so that's 0 0.7157, if I'm not mistaken, minus, now negative 0 0.85, so we need, we need to go to the negative values of Z, all the way down to the negative 0 0.8, and then it's 5. So nearest hundred is five. So if I'm not mistaken, the area of uh, the, the, the answer here, it's 0 0.1977, 0 0.1977. Take the difference and that will be the final answer. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got um, 0 0.5241. Yes, that's, that's right. That's absolutely right. Uh, yes. So it's, yes. Um, so it's 0. Point, uh, let me just write them down here, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.518. Want to convert this in, into percentage, multiply by 100, that's 51.8%. Any, any question so far? Let's see the chat. Um, yeah, so again, yeah, so the idea is whenever you see like, if, if you don't have like a percentage, so then it's probably a normal distribution. Um, and there is a mu and sigma given. Um, and that's how you convert your X to Z using the mu and the sigma. But then of course, but then you have to use this uh, table uh, table. All right, now let's move to the next problem and we'll see the difference between this problem and the next one. So next problem, um, problem uh, four, this is section 7.5. So, so the thing is in the section 7.5, so we discuss how to convert, this is where we discuss how to convert X bar to Z, not X, but X bar. So as you can see, like in, seven, in the next problem, it says, uh, well, the co coal is carried from a mine in West Virginia to a power plant in New York, et cetera, in hopper cars on a long train. Uh, the actual weights of coal loaded into each car have a mean of, so the mean, mu again, it's 75 uh, tons and sigma is 0 0.8. All right, so you have your sigma, you have your mu, you have your mu, you have your sigma. So probably you're gonna convert X or X bar to Z. So the first question it says, what's probably that one car chosen at random will have less than seven seventy four point five tons of coal, right? So you don't see an X bar in the first question, right? There's no X bar. It's one car chosen at random, etc. Will have less than seventy four point five. Uh, so there is no X bar in the first question. So if there is no X bar. You have your mu, you have your sigma. So we're gonna just convert X as you go to Z. So here it says less than, less than X, less than 74.5. So this is just probably that X is less than 74.5. You don't see any X bar, right? There's no X bar in this question. So it just, you wanna convert as usual, X to Z. So um, X to Z, so this is less than 74.5 minus uh, mu 75 and divided by 0 0.8. So this is probably the Z. So this is less, that's the area to the left. This is less. So this is area to the left. 
So it's Z, um, it's negative here. It's negative 0 0.5 over 0 0.8. So this is probably where Z is less than uh, negative uh, 0 0.8. Notes, so 0 0.5, yeah. So it's actually equal to 0 0.625. So negative 0 0.625, right? Uh, you can round up this, the answer if you want. It's up to you, I don't, I don't mind. Uh, let's, uh, let's say it's just a negative 0 0.62, okay? Uh, so now if you use a table, B, of course, uh, as usual. Uh, so then uh, the answer is negative 0 0.6. And then you need to go to uh, 0 0.02. So the answer is 26.76. So 0 0.26. Um, 76. Okay. Um, Convert into percentage, apply by 100, so it's 26.76 percent. All right, now I got that one wrong. <clears throat> what way is that? I have like by my paper, I have okay. um three. I have for the P, I have three zero eight five, and I have zero point five. Unless I'm, you know, I missed something in my note or I put something wrong, but I thought I had that right. Uh, that's not right though. So I'm about to go back to that and circle it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the, now the next question, as you can see there is, it says uh, it's about X bar, right? It's, next question says, what's probably that 40 cards cho chosen at random will have a mean load X bar, right? It says X bar. So X bar, um, you have a different formula when you convert X bar to Z, right? So here it says X bar, so uh, X bar less than 74.5. So now it's not X less, but it's X bar less 74.5, right? So you need to read carefully, read carefully the question guys, right? Because you have two different formulas when you convert X and X bar. So this is X bar now less. So again, it's area yeah. to the left, but this time, when you convert, uh, 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 when you convert X to Z, uh, but this time it's not X, it's X bar. So it's uh, X bar uh, minus mu, but it's not just divide by sigma, it's actually uh, divide by sigma, uh, divide by square uh, root of uh, N. Uh, uh, I guess I, I need to meet someone. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. Um, Yes, so, so it's probably that X bar less than 74.5, subtract as usual the, the mean, which is 75. But then it's not divided by 0 0.8, it's divided by 0 0.8 divided by square root of N. The N that's the size of the sample. So we have in this, uh, in this question, we have uh, 40 cars. So the size of the sample is 40, right? We have a sample of 40 cars. So it's divided by square root of 40, right? The N, the N, that's the size of the sample. We have a sample of 40 cars. Um, now guys, just be careful here. I mean, go step by step here when you complete this thing because uh, it can be uh, can be confusing. So this is X bar in the top, again, negative 0 0.5, but in the denominator, we have 0 0.8. So my advice for you, I mean, uh, it, it's, you know, do the square root first, like this square root of, um, uh, the square root of 40, right? So square root of 40, uh, you, you can again. You can round, round up, round up your answer if you want. So square root of forty is uh, six point, let's say thirty-two. Okay. And then, uh, so you have the top, which is negative zero point five, and then the denominator in the bottom. We can divide now the zero point eight by the square root of forty, right? The six point thirty-two. So that will be actually equal to zero. So. 
zero point eight divided by this uh, six point uh, thirty thirty two is it will be zero point let's say one twelve one two okay and now you can um, you can divide your the top uh, which is negative. Uh, 0 0.5 by the 0 0.12, and the answer is actually uh, 4. Point, this is uh, negative, so it's 4.16. Uh, sorry, this should be Z, not X bar, of course. We convert X bar to Z. It will be Z here. Right, this should be C, of course. Okay. Now, guys, uh, so now this is area to the left. This is less. This is area to the left. We're supposed to use the table, uh, table fee, table fee. But the thing is, the smallest value in the table fee, so this is negative four, right? Negative 4.16. So if you go to the the table, uh, which is right here. So table B, the smallest value of Z. Uh, so if you go negative Z, the smallest value we can have here is negative 3.4 and uh, uh, so negative, uh, the smallest value would be negative 3.49, right? We have negative four, right? Which is less than negative uh, 3.4 or th negative 3.49. Okay, so if you have something which is less than negative uh, three point forty nine, then the answer will be just uh, uh, will be just uh, zero, right? So what I'm saying here, guys, is that uh, so the smallest smallest value in table three value in table three the smallest value of z, of course. I'm talking about z. Smallest value of z in table v is negative 3.49, all right? But in our case, we got negative 4.16, which is less, right? Negative four, of course, is less than negative three. So, so if we have, if we have a value, we have a value, which is our case here, we have a value less than less than uh, negative three point forty nine. Then the answer should be just uh, zero. Okay. So what I'm saying here, guys, uh, because did, did you get this negative four point one uh, six or one uh, seven? Depends if you. Round up your answers. Did you get the negative four? No, I got um, I had I had three point nine five two eight on a calculator, and I rounded it to three point nine six at the end. Uh, negative three point nine six. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that's that's fine. That's I mean, that's fine. I guess. Uh, did you, did you do the the same? So you just subtract the the top. You got negative zero point five. And everything. Okay. But I gotta look at of... my paperwork, but I think so. Yeah, I have okay. negative five, negative ne five, negative five, negative zero point five. Yep, yep. negative zero point five, and then um two point one over zero point eight. I had that over there. Like okay. Have... But is okay. that wrong or no? No, 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 no. You're gonna get the same answer because if you get negative three point, you said negative three point nine, right? Mm -hmm. It, it's less anyway. It's less than uh, negative three point forty nine. Well, at negative three point nine six. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you three three negative three point nine six. Anyway, it's less than this. Mm -hmm. Than the negative three point forty nine. I mean, we don't have uh, three negative three point nine six in the table anyway. Mm -hmm. The smallest uh, smallest value of z in the table. It's negative three point forty nine. So if you got negative three point ninety six which is less than this. So this is not in the table and the final answer will be zero. It's always zero. So 
Uh, because I got yeah. that because I got that number or yes because you got negative 3.96 right oh okay so let me add so that fine answer I know that. yeah fine answer would be zero anyway because it's not in the table it's not in the table so I should write down remark because if it's because if it's less than negative 3.49 yeah then the answer will be zero, zero. Oh, okay. zero. Yeah, always. So I don't uh, have to redo this question, and I, I just I made a simple error. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess you get fine same fine answer. Yeah, you get this fine same fine answer. Um, any other question, guys? Let's see the chat. Oh, okay. I got. I think I got two questions in the chat. Oh no. Oh yeah, any yeah zero yeah thank you Andy absolutely zero yes. Um, and uh, one more thing, guys. One more more remark in the last two minutes. Uh, so this is the smallest value, right? It's negative three point forty nine, and the largest value, largest value, it's positive. Largest largest value of z, of course, is positive three point forty nine. So for example, if you got let's say z less than i don't know four point positive right i'm talking about positive four point uh, i don't know one nine or whatever or uh, or positive um a number which is larger larger than or more than 3.49 for example for example let's say you got probably that z is uh, less than 3.91 for example then because this is this 3.91 is more than 3.49, right? 3.91 is, it's not in the table, of course. Largest. Professor, I um I had gotten logged out. Did you did you go to another question? Oh damn, maybe so throw my that's a hello. Oh, okay, so it's not me. Yeah, no, I don't hear him either. Um I didn't get past the first review page. I had a hard enough time with this. Yeah, no, he didn't pass. He didn't, he didn't do another problem right now. I think he's going to continue tomorrow. Let me ask you a question, Yanni. I should, um, you know, I got that negative number. Well, I got yeah. the, that. I did the steps right, right? But I was yeah. supposed to just have the knowledge that if it's not that, then it's zero. You did the steps right. I think you only, I don't know what number you you put differently because he's telling you that it's okay. But let's say if your number will be less than the negative um, 3.49, then you'll be in trouble because it will not be zero. You it, it will be in the chart. But the steps, you got them right. So I don't know, what numbers did you use? Um, I'm trying to look at my paper because I had used Glean. Um... Cause I was typing it in, cause my handwriting is just like, ugh. I use though, I use um, I use the regular, I use the standard deviation. I used um the the mu, so because that never changed. So I used the seventy five, I used the zero point eight, and I used the forty cars, because my x was the the forty cars was the x. So that's the only thing that had changed in the problem. First number that you put was 40 first you put 40 minus i don't remember to keep you honest because that that's the the where it gets tricky if you put them in different places you're gonna get a different answer so, so the 40 what, comes first okay so i should probably redo this 
the one, right? I'm going to redo it. Yeah. So I have just, to redo these. Because I got that one wrong. Mm -hmm. And I got the first one wrong. I had the first one wrong. I had it. I put 2.99. But I didn't. Because you do, stopped. Because, yeah. you stopped you, because you didn't get it wrong. That's part of the process. It's just that you had to continue going to doing the square root. Okay. So Which, I should you know either the calculator helps you do that and sometimes if you if you're having like problems i don't know um the let's say you divide 2.99 um divided by two that number you get if you if you multiply that number two times and you get 299 that's your um your square the the square root of that number Oh, okay. Because, you know, I just be using a calculator. I hit second. And yeah, no, no. If you know how to use a calculator, forget everything I said. Just, I, it's just that no. some people may have problems with the calculator because like mine, I have to do an extra step on the calculator to mm -hmm. get the answer. And I'm oh, not I know what you're talking about. That little, like, it's like that square, square thing on the yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. I was using that one last night. Oh, God. I know. I know. That's when I got like this real long number. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so it's like you have to, about. you have to like once you, if you get it, forget about every other step. Like let's say he tells you you gotta get the square root. Forget about everything else that somebody else has to say. You just know that you gotta get the square root. When you do, when you did the first one, right? Do you make a chart or you do it how he does it? I made a chart. And I actually, I actually do it how he does, but I'll say to it. myself like, first of all, the numbers like you like you said, the numbers don't change. Mm -hmm. What changes is like one little detail of the whole thing. So then I'll do like, I'll write to myself. First, I have to subtract and I forget about everything else. Then when I have those answers of those subtractions, then I find the exponent of that, like the, 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 the two on the top. Yeah. I do that. Then after I get that, no, 